Yo, what is up everyone? Jay here with another Fire Emblem Heroes video and today we're going to take a look at this year's Fallen Banner and as always, Fallen Banners always bring some of the strongest units to the game and this year is no exception so it may make sense because the characters are evil or possessed or both. So yeah, Fallen Banners are very strong and the first unit on the banner is Fallen Female Byleth. So yeah, she is an insane sword infantry unit and she's going to be adding to that class, that very competitive class, the most competitive class type in the game pretty much. And I'm a little bit salty about her weapon, and we'll get into why. You guys might be able to guess why, but yeah. Captain's Sword gives her minus one cooldown, and she basically has the Bulwark skill built in, which is amazing because it's going to make her a better frontliner, and, you know, it's going to make her not allow people to pass through her and take out her allies. So that's going to make, be really good, especially for stuff like Summer Duels. Apologize, you can hear thunder outside. It's raining right now. Um, and then to start combat, if, she has, uh, if she's alive, she has plus $5 stats and has the healing, just like the bonus skill, and also neutralizes foes' bonuses. So that's going to be really strong um, in general, just to neutralize foes' bonuses, because she basically has two skills that are, you know, coveted in the B slot, because the B slot's very competitive. She has the Borg skill and basically a low skill. So that's really amazing built into the weapon. And then also, if the foe initiates combat and she's faster than them, she can counterattack the foe before the foe's first attack. So this is the main thing I'm salty about, because Brave Marth... As you guys know has advantage in his weapon and he's had that for the longest time that was kind of his thing for a while um you know young marth too but young marth's not as good anymore um the brave marth was the sword of entry that had advantage so that was really unique and that was something i could say what you know separated brave marth from everyone else because she has that he has that advantage now with brave byleth here not brave byleth um now with uh fallen byleth here she also has the same thing Obviously, it's a different condition. She has to be faster compared to Marth. But Marth has to require setup a lot of the time. But with Byleth, she just has to be faster. So hers is a bit better, honestly. So I am a little bit bummed out about that. I mean, her weapon was amazing already, but I guess they wanted to give her advantage to to help uh, make use of Divine Pulse. So her weapon's amazing, having Bulwark, a lull skill, so you can't really outspeed her if you try to speed stack. I mean, you can, but not through bonuses, regular buffs. And then she also has advantage. So that's really amazing, along with her A skill distant attack speed solo which is incredible so divine pulse uh, if you guys are familiar with brave violet it's the same thing once she attacks uh, you boost damage by 25 percent of your speed and then you also reduce damage from the foe's next attack by 75 percent so this is going to make her survivability really amazing along with close call four because she's going to get very fast and then have the damage reduction and then she also have advantage after that so brave violet's no joke she comes with distant attack speed solo which is essentially like a tier five distant counter skill honestly it's kind of crazy to think about because it's better than most of the other ones if you think about it except the only case that this would be worse i think is for obviously like a save tank that's trying to be fast i guess or whatever other variants they come out with because when you when you save someone you're next to them so the solo wouldn't work but still for omni swords and or should i say omni tanks and you know god swords like violet distant attack speed solo is pretty good you know i kind of want to get this for brave marth um but obviously the solo condition can be kind of annoying for him sometimes so that's something you have to keep in mind, but it gives you attack and speed plus 5, and it works in both phases. So this is distant attack speed solo, like I said, is kind of like a tier 5 disencounter skill, honestly. So that's kind of crazy. Definitely didn't expect this to drop. Close call 4 and times post 4, so this kid is kind of looking like Brave Marth. And the fact that Brave Marth was on the Hall of Forms, and a lot of people are trying to get him for a Forma, it might dissuade them from getting it now, because they're like, oh, Brave Violet is going to be here. And he's, she's kind of like a brave, better Brave Marth, at least when it comes to the vantage part, right? So, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> a little bit salty. The only thing she's missing here, though, is she doesn't have no follow-up. But, obviously, you can give that through Kadean Lind. You can give that through um, the Seal, obviously. So, it's not like Byleth is... She's, she's missing something, but she has a lot of stuff you'd want from a frontliner or just Omni-Tank, like the Bulwark skill, like I said. And she also has the uh, neutralized people's buffs, has Vantage. So, she's an amazing Sword Infantry unit, for sure. She's got the updated stat spread. So I'm a little bit salty, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just hoping that Brave Marth's uh, refine this year, uh, later this year, is really, really good. Because Brave Byleth really sets kind of a new standard when it comes to, like, vantaging. Because it's not really unique to Brave Marth, sadly, anymore, which hurts to say. But it is what it is. Um, and, of course, the timing with his form as well. But, you know, like I said, his refine is coming up, so I'm hoping that is really amazing. But, yeah, there's Byleth in action. Uh, Vantage triggering her Divine Pulse, and it's going to be really good for her. So that is Brave Byleth. Or, I keep saying Brave Byleth because she plays similarly to Brave Byleth, but Fallen, female Byleth. And the next unit on the banner is Maria. So Maria, I love Maria. I love the uh, the Macedon siblings. Uh, but I definitely didn't expect her to get an all. I mean, obviously she's a candidate. If you played the Arcadia games, I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler. I guess Fallen Banners kind of spoil a lot of stuff from the main games. But yeah, Maria is possessed for a reason. Uh, you can hear even say it, Medius. 
Um, and she has an amazing staff because, as you can see, she saves her brother from death right there, basically. I mean, it's a dry, it's basically drive miracle, but it also heals them. So that is insane. It's way better than all the other miracle effects because you also heal them. So it's like drive miracle plus a healing, and it's 99 HP. So basically, they're going to go back up to, to max and then reset the condition. So sacrifice staff, bow cannot counterattack, gives her minus one cooldown. And if unit initiates combat within two spaces of an ally, grants plus five dollar stats and also has the no guard effect. And then also grants more plus four dollar stats during combat. And then also um, the ability to have the miracle if the foe's HP or unit's HP is greater than one and foe would reduce HP to zero, use her five with one. And then you also restore the 99 HP to allies in, within two spaces. So she gives stats, drive miracle plus healing to allies within two spaces, which is incredible. So it says right there, it doesn't stack with other miracle effects, so you can't stack it with like um, Ymir, for example. Um, but still, this is amazing, and I think it's better than all the other miracle effects because you can give it to your allies within two spaces, so that's really easy, and you can heal them. So that's incredible and going to be really annoying in a lot of the modes, especially like summer duels when you're trying, trying to kill. Like, oh my gosh, I'm just thinking about it. Like raid boss teams that just stack a bunch of stats on one unit and then you have maria next to them gg <laughs> it's going to be really really hard to kill them because even if you do chip them down maria's just going to heal them up so yeah fatal smoke is just showing that it needs a tier 4 version and it also needs to be a seal in my opinion so fatal smoke would be really useful for this but yeah sacrifice staff is insane she comes with nudge plus holy panic and that looks like that's the end of it but it's not because they scroll down now for these skills so the skill selection and the skill descriptions are getting so long that now they're scrolling down in the trailer. So, uh, kind of getting crazy at this point. I don't think they've ever done a scroll down in the actual trailer. Maybe once or twice, but not this much, I don't think. So she comes with Holy Panic, a new um, uh, assist for healers. So this is pretty cool. It's basically the same as regular Panic, um, except it gives attack speed minus 6, I think, along with the Panic effect. So that's pretty good. Um, nothing insane, I'd say, but pretty good for her for more support and then attack speed unity poetic justice and even recovery so though all the other abc skills are you know we've seen them before but yeah maria is an insane unit you know she might not be the star of the show but support wise that drive miracle plus healing is essentially like an om staff if you guys have played the arcanine games om staff is basically the staff that revives people and this is kind of the closest thing on a skill that isn't the light's blessing item so i guess that's om staff now in fame and the next unit is a nankos uh, yeah, kind of crazy to see Anakos in the game because we expected him be to be a mythic, but he is here making his debut as a fallen unit, and he is a blue dragon armor. So again, kind of like with the fall with the former banner, like fallen not fallen tiki, <laughs> legendary tiki is also a blue dragon armor, and Anakos is here as well. Um, yeah, so he's a pretty crazy uh, tank. So silent breath gives him minus one cooldown, and if the phone nations combat or if they're above 75% HP, as our combat grants plus five to all the stats and inflicts in a penalty on the foe to all their stats depending on the current bonus on the foe stats. So if they're buffed up, they're going he's going to weaken them. So essentially like Legion's weapon, we've seen this before in other weapons where it's like the buff reverser. If they have buffs, then you t use it against them. So that's really good. And then he also reduces damage, or actually, sorry, he deals damage 20% of unit speed, so he gets nice true damage, and also reduces damage from the foe's first attacks by 7. So just straight up 7. So I guess if you're doing 20, then it should be 13. Um, so that's simple. And uh, yeah, so, so it's just the first attacks, and then if the foe's range is equal to 2, he has the adaptive damage. So that's pretty, it's a pretty simple weapon, but it's very good for him because he's going to be a save tank. Having true damage, having damage reduction is really good. He comes with Noontime, Kestrel Stance 3, Savvy Fighter 4, which, you know, you guys know me, I kind of want this for Winter Marth because this is going to be an upgrade. So this is uh, still an enemy phase skill, but it bas basically gives you extra stats now instead of just no follow-up. So attack speed minus 4 on the foe you inflict on them, has the uh, no follow-up, and also if your speed is greater than or equal to the foe speed minus 10, you reduce the damage from foe's first attack by 40% compared to the previous savvy fighter, which is only 30%. So this is a definitely a huge upgrade, or not huge upgrade, but a solid upgrade. Um, because you're going to be able to get the speed check even easier because you get stats in the skill. But uh, the thing is, because you get extra stats, I guess they up the speed check on it. Because before, the speed check was only 4, I think, or something like that. It wasn't 10. So now you have to outspeed them more, but it's obviously going to be easier because you get stats in the weapon. So that's a little bit of a bit of a bummer, but for Marth, for Winter Marth especially, that's not going to be a problem because he outspeeds most units in the game. Or at least a good amount of units in the game. So Savvy Fighter 4 is something I want. For sure, not sure if I'm going to be summoning for it. And then he comes with attack speed near save, which is going, good, going to be good with his speed stacking playstyle. So he's definitely going to be really fast, and if you use speed buffs on him, you're definitely not going to double him because he's just going to use those buffs against you. 
Um, so that is a non-coast, very solid unit, pretty simple, honestly, um, as a safe unit, but definitely very good. And I guess you can also use them as a far saver if you want as well. That can work. Um, a, a fast far saver, but obviously like Winter Marth is a better one, I'd say, because of his weapon um, is refined. But Anakos could definitely work, and he's pretty cool. And then the next unit on the banner, the last one, is a rearmed Fallen Hero, and it is Fallen Krom. So, you know, Fallen Krom was kind of a thing, a lot of thing, a thing a lot of people expected, but not as a rearmed hero, which I think is kind of a weird choice. And he's also another sword cavalry unit. You know, he has his sword cavalry version already, and now he's another sword cav. So, I guess Krom fans are a little bit bummed that he's another sword unit. But I say to that, welcome to my world, because <laughs> Marth also gets a ton of sword alts. But yeah, Krom as a sword cavalry unit, and he comes with Arcane Devourer. <laughs> Devourer. I said that funny. But yeah, this weapon is uh, basically a more offensive version compared to Arcane Luthier that uh, Lyft had. So this gives you minus one cooldown. It's our combat. If you're alive, you grant plus five dollar stats. Special cooldown charge plus one. So that's going to be really good with his Gale Force or any other special you want to trigger. And then you also reduce damage from the foe's first attack by 40%. And also if unit speed is greater than the foe's speed, you have um, no follow-up. So Arcane Devourer is going to be good for a lot of offensive sword calves like Krom. And uh, it's kind of like Arcane Lumen compared to Arcane Xiang. You know, it's a more offensive weapon for the player phase units. So, um, you know, it may look more stacked than the one on Lift, but Lift is more defensive. It gives you, like, uh, follow-up negation and, you know, guaranteed follow-up. So it's a little bit different, but uh, for offensive, like I said, for offensive units, it's going to be really good for sure. And he comes with Fate Unchanged. Uh, it move, moves at target ally to the opposite side, so reposition, grants another action to unit. It looks isolation. And then inflicts exposure on the nearest foes within four spaces of both unit and target after movement through the next actions and foes within two spaces of those foes equipped with a skill that can trigger the savior effect through the next actions geez that was a long sentence so this is kind of crazy because this is like the third variation of the fate change skills that Krom has so this one's a little bit different um i don't think it's as good as brave Krom because brave Krom you steal the effect but this one you have exposure on the foes um which is really good because exposure just gives you more damage so that is really good and uh, Fate Unchained is another one in the Fate family for Krom, so that's really good for him. And uh, if they have a skill that can trigger the Savior effect, um, you also inflict exposure on them. So it kind of is a thing to help against save units, so that's pretty nice. And it comes with Guild Force, Attack Speed Clash 4. We're not done yet because it's going to scroll down and show the rest of the skills. Speed Defense, yeah, speed defense Snag 4 gives you um, Speed Defense minus 4 on the foe during combat. And if you use an Assist skill, so with Krom here it's going to be perfect. You inflict speed defense minus seven and sabotage on nearest foes within four spaces of unit and target. And also the same thing with the save skills. So this is really a nice upgrade to the snag skills because the snag skills were pretty much dead on arrival. They weren't very good. So having a tier four version that gives them sabotage is really good. Along with the exposure is going to be crazy damage. Um, obviously you have to watch out for unity effects and stuff, but this is going to be pretty good against the units that don't have that. So speed defense snag is really good for Krom because he's just going to reposition all over the place, fate unchanged, and then afflict all those effects. So that's really good. So they're pumping out the sabotage effect just like we saw in Mark. And then he comes with infantry speed tactic just like his brave version, I believe. So yeah, this Krom is very stacked in terms of his, even though he doesn't have a PRF weapon, at least he has a PRF skill, you know, so that's going to make him stand out more. And his skill is pretty good. So that is Fallen Krom. Definitely something. And my brother's excited for it. So um, hoping he gets it. But yeah, I think this is... Is this Fallen Risen King Krom? I think it is from the Cypher, I believe. Uh, but yeah, that is the banner pretty much. The, the GHB unit is Linus. So that's pretty cool. Um, they could have used another Fire 7 character. I don't have anything against Linus. But it's like Maria, right? They had a lot of options. They could have used Nina, Elise as well. But they picked Maria. Because Maria, you know, she is... I mean, she's adorable and all, but I would like to see someone else because she just got her spring alt like recently. I didn't think she would get another alt this soon. I'm not complaining about it. I'm happy Maria's getting something, but uh, definitely could have used someone else that doesn't have an alt yet. But yeah, that's another that's another Arcane W. I'll take it. And this banner is very stacked with all the skills and the units are very strong for sure. And of course, the rearmed hero. You want to give that sword to a lot of your favorite cavaliers and like sword flyers and stuff that can abuse specials and guild force. That's going to be really good. So I'm really tempted. There's no Fallen Marth on this banner, which I'm kind of glad about. But I'm still tempted to get Savvy Fighter 4 for my Winter Marth. And also a Distant Attack Speed Solo for my Brave Marth. So yeah, I'm just really hoping his Refine is really good. Because uh, <laughs> Fallen Female Bath is insane with her weapon. And pretty much an easier advantage, in my opinion, um, than Brave Marth for the most part. So yeah, that's the Fallen banner, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below. It's definitely crazy. Um, you know, the standout unit, I think the best one is definitely Byleth for sure. 
but it's not like it's anything new that we haven't seen before on like previous Fallen banners, like um, Fallen Out of Guard. She was really like ahead of her time, I guess, because she could move again and she was very, very bulky. And uh, at the time, we didn't really have a unit like that. With Brave Byleth, obviously, we have Brave Marth, who's done the Vantage thing before, and we've seen those effects before. I guess not Bulwark and a weapon, but you know what I'm talking about. She doesn't really bring anything super unique. Like, a lot of her kit we've already seen before, and playstyle we've seen before, like Divine Pulse and stuff. But still, she's definitely the best unit on the banner, in my opinion. Next, probably be Maria. I mean, some people might argue Maria is the best one because of her support, which is obviously is going to be really, really annoying, but very, very good. And then uh, I guess Anankos too, he's kind of a sleeper, but Krom, I think also, it's kind of hard to say tied between Krom and Anankos, but Krom also has, he has pure of assist. So um, yeah, this Fallen Banner is insane for sure. And uh, I'm kind of tempted to summon on it, but a reminder, this is just a regular banner. So it's not going to last as long as seasonals because a lot of people might get mixed up that thinking Fallen Banners are seasonals, but they're not, they don't last as long, like a month like seasonals do. Um, but yeah, that's the Fallen Banner. Let me know what you guys think down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Please stay safe out there. Peace out.